today we wanted to take advantage of the speakers here at the Sustainability Conference. And joining me is Dr. Doug Tallamy, who is an entomologist and an ecologist. And Dr. Tallamy, you started a revolution with a few of your books that you wrote about bringing nature home. What does that mean to bring nature home? My request is that people landscape in a way that shares their little space of the earth with other living things. Mm -hmm so that every place humans go, it's not a dead scape. <laughs> we, need to, we need to have functioning ecosystems and we need the life that moves those ecosystems. And we need it everywhere. And why is that so critical right now? Well, we have a, we have a biodiversity crisis. We're mm -hmm. losing the plants and animals that keep us alive on this planet. And we're doing that with parks and preserves, which means we gotta start to practice conservation outside of parks and preserves. And that's right where we live, where right. we work. And you talk a lot about like the homeowner and their role in this. Um, what is the role of the plant that you see in the landscape? Plants are the organisms capturing energy from the sun. They turn it into food, simple sugars and carbohydrates. And if you don't pass that food on to animals, you don't have any animals. But all plants don't do that. So you have to choose the right plants that will share the food that they make. And that's where native plants come in. They do it much better than plants from other, other countries. Okay, and what's one of those primary consumers that you talk a little bit, the insects, right? Yeah, most, most vertebrates don't eat plants directly. They eat insects that eat plants. So for example, if you have a breeding bird in your yard, they're feeding their babies caterpillars, thousands, 6,000 to 9,000 caterpillars to make one clutch of a bird. And those caterpillars come from plants, if you have the right plants. All right, so you've mentioned kind of the role of the plant. Let's talk a little bit. What do you see as the specific role of a plant in the landscape? It's, it's really to generate that food that drives life on, on planet Earth. Yeah. Now we also, you know, we love plants as decorations. They're beautiful. So we want to choose plants that are beautiful and ecologically functional. That's the challenge. Okay. And in your book, you talk a lot about alien plants. Can you define what that means? Well, plant from outside of our, our uh, local ecosystems, the ones that don't have a co-evolved relationship with the local insects. So if our insects can't eat those plants, then there's no insects and the birds can't feed their young and it all falls apart. So when we, we landscape with plants from China, for example, and most of our ornamentals are from Asia, that system breaks down because our insects can't eat those plants. You know, I know there's a big concept of what is native and that sort of stuff, and I, I won't get into that discussion necessarily, but there are different ecologies, right? Even in our United States. Um, yeah. How do we talk about that and deal with that with in native plants in the U.S.? Yeah, it's not one ecosystem, it's, it's ecosystems in particular geographic areas. We call them ecoregions, and you want to choose plants that have evolved within that ecoregion. Okay. Now, ecoregions move around over immense amounts of time, but you know, for the last 10,000 years, it's been pretty much in place, and you want to use plants that have interacted with the plants and, and insects around them in that space. Okay. If it's from China, it hasn't done that. <laughs> and how do you um, convince the homeowner that like insects are good? Because I know a lot of times there are insects we <laughs> like. We talk about pollinators and butterflies and all this, but I mean, there's the grasshopper too. <laughs> E.O. Wilson told us way back in 1987 that insects are the little things that run the world. And if they go, so do we. So whether you like them or not, they're absolutely necessary to pollinate all those plants, to drive that food web, to, to um, recycle nutrients. Okay. Life depends on insects, I'm sorry. Absolutely, no. <laughs> and you're no stranger to Oklahoma. You've been here several times Couple before. Times, yeah. And our yeah. region is a little bit different than uh, Southern Pennsylvania over there. Um, yeah. Tell us a little bit about like, um, what that means for us here in Oklahoma. You know, as you move farther west, there's, there's less and less rain, although you wouldn't know it from last night. <laughs> so you move more into a prairie system. And that means the grasses are gonna dominate more than, than the woody plants and the, the trees. We have more trees here now because of course we got rid of the, the bison and we don't burn and, and uh, so they're, they're doing better. But that's, it's that transition is really based on the amount of rainfall you get. Okay, and of course as we go, especially east in your Oklahoma, we have a lot more oak trees. Yes. You wrote a whole book about the oak and how critical it is. Tell us a little bit about the value of the oak tree. You know, if we're talking about making insects for the birds, Oaks make more insects than any other plant. That's their primary value. They're also, they live a long time, so they sequester a lot of carbon. Um, they're huge, so mm -hmm. they sequester a lot of carbon. <laughs> they manage the watershed. Even pollinators use their, their pollen, even though they're wind pollinated. So they do everything that we want a plant to do. Okay, and so if we have, a lot of us have moved into a landscape that's already existing. It has that kind of alien plant landscape. <laughs> yeah. um, and we're trying to balance the aesthetics with 
possibly the ecology of it all. How do I go about making that transition? Uh, you, you need to know what the plants are in your, your landscape. If you have invasive ornamentals, and there's a number of them, privet and calorie pear mm -hmm. and other things, you want to get rid of those as fast as you can because they're ecological tumors. They just escape and go everywhere. The others, you know, the, landscape by attrition. If they die, replace it with a, a productive native plant. Okay. You probably have more lawn than, than you should. I, I always talk about cutting the area of lawn in half because mm -hmm. lawn doesn't do any of the things we need them to do. Okay, well, you've given us a lot to think about, and it's good to know that we don't have to go rip up our landscapes completely. Right. Um, but maybe just think about a new sort of way of thinking. Yeah, it's it's a process. Yeah. It could take you 30 years. But. Well, like all good gardens, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing this information with well, us Thanks today. for the chance. We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.